Hi, and welcome everybody to my YouTube channel. My name is Ross Benjamin of rbwins.com. And like every Monday, I'm joined by fellow sports handicapper, Mr. Doug Upstone of docsports.com. Doug, how was your weekend, buddy? You know what? My weekend was absolutely fantastic across the board, Ross. Uh, ended up seven and two. Hit uh, hit all three of my big plays, and including one in baseball. So uh, yeah, it, it was it was very good, and just uh, looking forward to uh, another week. The, I, there's only one thing, Ross, that bugged me the entire weekend. Okay, and it was the free pick here. Okay, from last Monday, Marshall. Yeah. Marshall, yeah. minus 10, up 17 with seven minutes to go at home. Talk and about they give a up 21 unanswered. I know. <laughs> they just <laughs> melted down. It was unbelievable. It was uh, so, 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 but yes, but yes, everything else was great. Uh, so, like I say, excited, happy uh, to get another week started and get it going. Well, that brings you? me to this. Um, these are free picks, folks. Okay. That does not mean that we're not trying to win. Um, that just means that we sell our picks for a living, whether it be on a daily basis or in subscription plans. It's how we make our living. We also bet on our games. It's how we make our living. So it'd be unfair to our paying clients to give you the same picks that we're giving them. So when we use free picks, for example, if Doug had five picks last Saturday and I had five picks most likely we're giving you the sixth best pick on the board, which is still pretty darn good when you're considering how many college football games are on a Saturday. Just wanted to touch upon that, Doug, before we went further, uh, because uh, some people like to complain about the free picks when they don't do well. That's your prerogative. I appreciate, we appreciate you continuing to watch, but by the same token, um, if you want to hang your head on free picks, uh, they're going to hit at a lower percentage than our pay selections. It's just the way it is. Um, and, and again, I can't emphasize enough. That does not mean we don't want to win on these plays. Doug, anything you want to touch upon in that regard? Yeah. Yeah. You know, for, from that standpoint and, and the other thing, I mean, I agree with everything that you said. And also we're doing this on Monday. Okay. Yes. I mean, neither one of us have gone over the card heavy okay I'll, we've both made observations as to some things made some notes as to what we may or may not like and then as we dig uh, deeper some of these things some of these games might go off off the board some of them may you know be real close to being plays okay in fact i i can say in all honesty uh marshall ended up being a play for me it was a smaller play but ended up being one of my plays uh but you know what it just, it just didn't come in. So, you know what we, it, it isn't for lack of effort. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I gave out West Virginia last week and uh, I used it at the website. Yeah. I mean, so West Virginia, which uh, again, I'm, I don't want to steal my thunder here because I'm going to go into a similar betting scenario on my free pick coming up. So stay tuned for that. And Doug Upstone's free pick in college football on Saturday. Doug, any in interesting observations uh, that you may have had uh, after watching week three of the college football season? Absolutely, Ross. And among them was the uh, Clemson-Georgia Tech game. And you cannot come away from that game. And we'll see how quickly the odds makers catch up to Clemson here. Uh, this team this year is definitely in decline. OK, there's there's just no question about it. And it's all on one side of the ball, the offense. Now, I don't blame their quarterback OK, for all, all of this. I actually blame Devil Sweeney because the recruiting is not good enough. And in the case of the offensive line, the, the offensive line recruiting has not been good now for up to three years. OK, an argument can be made. The running backs, uh, they're slightly above average to go along with an average offensive line and their wide receivers after really being, let's just say it, a, a wide receiver, you sending, I think, what, six or seven players to the NFL, maybe over a three or four year period. Well, that's not going to be the case, at least not with the upperclassmen on this team. And so they are struggling to score points offensively. And so when you're looking at all these 25s or better on Clemson, even in a, a conference really as weak as the ACC, boy, oh boy, Ross, I don't know how you really, I'm not saying to play the other team necessarily. Yeah. I don't see how you back Clemson. Yeah. In, in similar situations too, not only Clemson schools that have a big brand name. Okay. Uh, not only a big brand name, but 
uh, as Doug astutely observed, a team like Clemson, who's been to the college football playoffs, what, Doug, last four or five years? Um, and it, let's put it this way. They've had enormous success under Dave, Dave Sweeney. And uh, this year doesn't look like the same caliber of team, but you may be still paying a hefty price on them just based on their past accomplishments and because they're Clemson. So uh, a really good point there and something to consider going forward, folks. Not only Clemson, but uh, any school with a uh, hefty reputation. Notre Dame's another example, okay? Uh, they're typically a heavily bet team. They did cover last week, but, you know, the first couple weeks, they were a heavy favorite. And a lot of people are looking back at the team they had last year in reputation. Well, got to be careful. You, now you're starting to see their lines come down. Like last week, they were seven against Purdue, and they covered that number. The week before... They failed to cover against Toledo, needed a touchdown in the last minute at home to uh, win the game straight up, let alone cover the spread. And that's the same Toledo team that got knocked off last week by an awful, I mean, awful Colorado State team. And they lost that game at home. Any other points you want to make, Doug? Yeah, I, just two more real quick ones, Ross. Uh, just uh, talk about coaching making a difference. Uh, the Miami and Michigan State game. Okay, nothing, nothing more to say about that other than the fact uh, Manny Diaz is the coach of Miami. This is an undisciplined team that mm -hmm. that has some talent. I think they're overrated in terms of their talent. But then Mel Tucker at Michigan State, uh, he has done a tremendous job and a huge surprise so far this year in terms of how they played. Very physical the complete opposite of Miami. They were quite disciplined. Now, does this go forward with Michigan State? <laughs> we'll see, okay, as uh, as they get more into Big Ten play, uh, you know, so we'll see there. And then the other thing, Ross, real quick, 13 teams have a 3-0 and or better ATS record. Among them are Bowling Green and Utah State. Now, nobody would have ever expected that, okay? Now, the Falcons, quite honestly, are, are better than, uh, than anticipated, but they really haven't played anybody. However, the Aggies of Utah State, okay, they've won twice on the road uh, as, as uh, underdogs of nine points or better against Air Force and Washington State. Now, for those that may not know, their coach is Blake Edwards, who most recently was at Arkansas State, and Arkansas State was always a contender in the Sun Belt. This guy is a very good coach. He's got a great offensive mind. I think it just he just kind of got tired, you know, yeah. down at Arkansas State. Got it. So he's it, it, and has admitted that. Got a change of pace. And all of a sudden, look at what Utah State's winning. I'm not saying they're going to win the Mountain West, but this is a team that definitely is on the rise and has an excellent head coach. Yeah, very good points. And uh, going back to Manny Diaz, I can't agree more. Um, I don't want to pick on him, you know. Uh, I'm sure he's Why a not? fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, look, his, his biggest claim to fame right now is his father was the one-time mayor of Miami, which uh, maybe they had a little do to do with him getting the job because they, he seems to uh, have been given a lot of rope. I mean, I know they were eight and two last year, but you know, this year I've watched them and it's a perfect example of what I just alluded to, Doug, how Miami was ranked in the top 25 to start with is beyond me. Okay. Reputation and these recruiting services that, give out four and five star uh, mission or Miami, excuse me, always seems to get a plethora of those players and mostly from South Florida, which is just a hotbed for high school football. And uh, they don't live up to reputation. They haven't for a long time. And, you know, you see, they score a touchdown or dancing around. It reminds me of the old Miami team. Stop watching the tape of the old Miami teams, guys. You're not as good as those guys. Those guys backed it up. OK, you guys haven't done anything on a national scale, haven't been relative on a national scale for quite a long time now. So, yeah, I agree, Doug. And uh, I'd be shocked if uh, if if he uh, returns as coach next year. And I wouldn't be shocked at all if he doesn't make it through the course of this season as well. Doug, you have a free play for us on Saturday in college football. Yes, sir. I am going to the Big Ten to, to talk about 
uh, Illinois and Purdue. Now, since upsetting the Nebraska in the in the in Brett Bielma's de, Brett Bielma's debut at Illinois, they're zero and three straight up and one and two against the spread. Uh, the opening two games, the offense looked pretty good. They scored thirty points in each of the first two games. Well, since they've scored a total of thirty one points in their next two outings. Now, Purdue comes in two and one. Uh, they lost, as Ross mentioned, uh, at Notre Dame, but they certainly had their chances to cover that game and and were in it, you know, for the most part, right, right. So close to the end when they made a couple of turnovers. Now, Purdue's, uh, to me, they're an attractive pick at minus 11 at home because they have the 13th best passing attack, averaging over 325 yards a game. Their quarterback is Jack Plummer, completely unrelated to Jake Plummer, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so he, his name is Jack Plummer. Uh, so, but he's going up against an Illinois defense that ranks 125th against the pass, giving up better than 320 yards per game. Now their coach, Jeff Brown, who was a uh, good college player at uh, the university of Louisville, he likes to throw the ball, but he realizes his offense is going to work much better if he can run the ball effectively, which opens up more passes passing lanes and he's going up against an Illinois defense that is 84th against the rush okay so that should give Purdue their balance the Boilermakers come into this one nine and two in their uh, having uh, covered two of their last three games and Illinois is a sickly six and 18 after allowing 325 or more yards passing on their last game let's make it Purdue by 17 to cover against Illinois so that's Purdue minus the 11 over Illinois from Doug Upstone. Great play, Doug. Um, I'm going to take a look at another Big Ten game as Nebraska travels to East Lansing, Michigan to take on the team you just brought up, the Michigan State Spartans. Now, last Monday, I gave out a similar type of scenario here. Um, we had a West Virginia team that was unranked at the time, and they were a three-point favorite against uh, – Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, yes. They were Virginia Tech was number 15 in the country. And I just said, this doesn't make sense. Okay, here's the thing, folks. I trust unequivocally the odds makers and the lines makers and the sports books, whatever term you want to use, the guys who set the lines. I trust them a hell of a lot more than people betting in the polls. Now let's stop and think about this. Doug said there's 12 teams that are 3-0 and ATS thus far. One of those teams is Michigan State. Not only are they 3-0 and ATS, they're also 3-0 and straight up. Now, they weren't ranked to start the year. Uh, by way of their 38-17 to slacking over an undisciplined and poorly coached Miami of Florida team, they've now catapulted themselves to number 20 in the country, in the latest AP poll. And for whatever reason, they're only a five point home favorite against a Nebraska team that's two and two this year. Uh, their only two wins came at home against Fordham and against the University of Buffalo. Nothing against those schools, but they're not nationally ranked, okay? Uh, their two uh, times they went on the road, they lost to a terrible team that Doug just mentioned and went against, Illinois. Uh, Self-destructed in that game. Talk about lack of discipline since Jeff Frost has been there. Surprisingly, that's been evident. However, Nebraska is coming off the, probably their finest performance of the season last week. Despite losing, they went to number four Oklahoma as a 22-point dog and only lost that game 23-16. Now they find themselves as just a five-point underdog, a ranked team against a program that has gone 4-18 and 18 straight up in their last 22 tr uh, true road games. Think about that. Michigan State 3-0 straight up in ATS, now nationally ranked. Nebraska 2-2, two two, unimpressive wins. But coming off a good performance, but still just a five point dog. It's never that easy, folks. Uh, so don't get suckered in. This is one of my sucker plays of the week on Michigan State. Uh, as a result, I'm going with the Nebraska Cornhuskers plus the five dog uh, at uh, 
on the road, I should say, at Michigan State. So, again, as Bill Rafferty would say, onions. In any event, Doug, what do you got going on this week? How you? I know you've been doing awfully well in college football and the NFL to start the season. Uh, fill the folks in a bit, and then where could they find you? Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, you can find me at Doc Sports, and it's the Doug Upstone page at Doc Sports. I'm coming off a seven and two weekend uh, it, across the board in football, so that was very good. That was very good. So happy about that. Uh, college football, you know, ready to go with a, another big play. Of course, will come will come about this uh, upcoming weekend. And Ross, and it isn't just been in just football either. Okay. Now the NFL, I'll talk about that on Thursday. Have, you know, have gotten off to a super start, but just in my sense, September 8th, uh, I am 24 and six on all my plays across the board. Wow. That's 80%. And based on units at docs, that's almost $7,000 worth of profit in terms of units. So it has been a superb stretch and I'm looking to try and keep it going. We know how long these things last, Ross. Yeah, so you, yeah. I mean, when look it's going it. good, you write it. And yeah, that's exactly, exactly what I'm right, looking man. to do. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. people don't realize, you know, they jump on board after you go 24 and 6 and they expect similar results over the next <laughs> month, you know. Um, that's a little, I mean, not to say that that hasn't happened in the past to either one of us where we go on this torrid run. Okay, but at the end of the day, folks, I mean, if somebody hits 58 to 61 percent for you throughout the course of a year, and I'm not talking about giving out big money line favorites, uh, you can make a ton of money. Let's put it this way. Even if you hit 55 to 57 percent, if you exercise proper money management, you will make a lot of money. So and again, my point goes to this. Uh, Doug took a little heat last week on his free picks uh, on these videos, but it, by the same token, look what happened if you would have invested a little bit of money on Doug at Doc Sports. Guess what? You would have been 24 and 6 since September the 6th. Wow, that's a nice run. Now, as far as I go, Doug, it's, it's pale in comparison, but since September 1st, I've gone 24 and 13 with my paid selections. Uh, Major League Baseball right now on a seven and one run. Um, also, at Major League Baseball 10 star top plays, which I don't give a lot of them out through the course of the year. As a matter of fact, this year I am 38 and 17 with my Major League Baseball 10 star top plays. Due to math, folks, that's a pretty good percentage. And I don't give you big chalks. Very rarely do I ever go over minus 130. And uh, like to keep the small favorites going at times, some underdogs in there as well. So your rate of return with me in Major League Baseball has been extremely good, like it has been with Doug this year. And in college football, coming off a three and two week, including my third straight game of the week winner is actually it was my game of the month on Saturday, but 10 star top plays. I give out one of those a week in college football, three and oh so far including last Saturday, the North Carolina Tar Heels, minus seven and a half, and they just blew out Virginia 59-39. After trailing at the half, they just, uh, they waxed them in the second half. Boy, what an offense North Carolina has. And keep an eye on Virginia folks going forward, because if they don't play an explosive team like North Carolina, that team could put up some points as well. So again, Doug, uh, it's been a good start for both of us in football, and we're going good in baseball, and we have been all year. I'd like to wish you uh, the very best this coming week. We'll talk again on Thursday for the NFL. And, folks, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free to do so. And while you're there and you watch these videos, uh, hit the like button for us because uh, we're putting a lot of time and effort into this and we just like it's a small token of appreciation it makes us happy and uh, you know if you hit that subscribe button and you hit the notification bell in your settings you're going to be notified of any of these sports betting videos going up on our channel Doug any final thoughts before I let you go it just hey Ross, like I said before, I'm excited for another week uh, of uh, coming ahead. And uh, as you mentioned, baseball continues to roll. So hey, you know what? There's two weeks to go, or just under two weeks to go in the regular season. Take advantage of it. 
There you go. And join us again on Thursday for our NFL edition of our free pick videos. Until then, folks, good luck, God bless, and take care.